booktube it's missy and yeah long time no see i've been gone pretty much all this month it's been crazy uh the first week of january i was playing video games the second week i was gone in hawaii the third week i went back to work but then my husband had the flu and then gave it to me and so i was sick all last weekend up until tuesday of this week i'm still getting over the uh the cold that i had and so yeah i've just <sighs> let me tell you let me tell you it gets so frustrating when i have goals set for myself and then i don't complete them because i'm such a list you know maker and checker offer and i didn't do anything this month aggravating um so before i get into the actual video i do want to announce a couple things the first one is my channel turned three on the 14th Yay! Happy birthday to the binge reader. Um, super excited. Thank you all for coming and staying and listening to me babble on about books and all of that. Um, and then I also want to talk about giveaways. So because I had my birthday, my channel birthday, I usually want to do a giveaway for that and it just so happened that I did make 3,000 subscribers this month which is amazing so I will be doing a giveaway video in the next couple days for that I also have a trade away giveaway that I will be doing um, in for December also coming in a couple days um, by the way I I hate talking about this over and over again because it makes me feel like a bad person but if you participate in the tradeaways and you don't send me a book it makes me feel weird and awkward because I've already made this communication with you over the internet saying oh yeah I would totally like this book and then getting all excited over the book that I'm getting and then you guys get all excited about the books that you're getting and then I don't get the book in return and it kind of like I don't know how to I don't know what to do after that. Do I, you know, bug the person that won the trade away and say like, hey, you didn't send me anything? Or do I just never allow them to participate in other giveaways? Like I don't know. And it kind of freaks me out. It makes me super self-conscious and anxious and all of that stuff. So if you're going to participate in the trade aways, please, please, please know that you have to send me something. It makes me weird. It makes me feel weird when I send you something with this empty promise and nothing ever happens back. And it's happened in the last three tradeaways where someone won something and didn't send me anything. And I don't want to feel like I'm being greedy because that was not the point of the whole trade away. Um, like I said, I do give giveaways all the time. And so if you are just looking for a free book, just wait a little while. I will totally send out free books. But if you're going to participate in the trade aways, please send me a book back or a bookmark or anything just so that way <laughs> the promise isn't broken because then it makes, like I said, me feel awkward rant over. All right, and then I also want to talk about next Wednesday, which is February 1st. If you're new to my channel and you didn't know, I am a host for the YA Booktube Awards. The awards took place last year in 2016 on all the 2016 YA debut novels. I am the host for the mystery and thriller um, books and the nominees for those was The Call by Pidar O'Gillian, I think that's how you say his last name. Um, there was also Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Montescalco, I think that's how you say her name. And then there was With Malice by Eileen Cook. Now, those are the three um, nominees for thrillers and mysteries. I will be having a live show with the rest of the hosts for that genre on February 1st at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, which is, I'm pretty sure, or I'll be late, 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. So if you guys would like to watch me make a fool of myself on live uh, YouTube, um, 
show up and ask questions if you've read the books. Um, I don't know how live shows go. I've never participated in any before, and I don't know if it's going to be any lag or delays. We'll see. So, yeah. Again, um, I will leave all the links down below for all of the information on the YA Booktube Awards in the info box below. Okay, I think that's everything. Birthday, giveaways, the live show that's coming up. Oh, and the fact that January is almost over and I didn't do any of my bookish goals. Pretend January never happened because I will start fresh in February and get on with life. So, with all that being said, what is this video about? Um, I miss December and January for my most anticipated reads because there was barely any books for either month. And so I'm just going to make a collective winter anticipated reads. Cause so I'm just going to put December, January, and February in this video. This video is going to be a little bit long. I do apologize, but I'll try to go as quick as I can. December, three books came out that I was super interested in. Um, whoo, I'm falling in reading. The first one was Mind Games by Heather W. Petty, and this is the sequel to um, Locke and Maury, which is a uh, Sherlock Holmes and um, Moriarty, but it's like a, the boy. It's a boy and a girl, and they are detectives, and that's all I know. The next thing I was interested in reading is Iceling, and this is by Sasha Stevenson. This is going to be a series, and this is a sci-fi, and the only information I have for this book, I do apologize, is Callie was found in the Arctic. She can't talk and has convinced her adoptive sister to take her back at the age of 16. So what I remember is, I don't know if there was like an archaeologist that went out into the Arctic and then found this living toddler, you know, out there and a whole bunch of other kids. There wasn't just one child. There was a bunch of little ice children. And they were all adopted. But then at 16, they, I think, the Iceling or the ice kids um, have this uh, ability to know that they need to go back home. So at 16... Uh, the girl is trying to convince her adoptive sister to help her get back there. And then the very last book that I was interested in reading in December was Shadow House, which is book two by Dan Pablocki. I already purchased that book. It was a pre-order. Uh, you guys already seen it, but this is the picture. I still haven't picked it up, but I will soon, eventually, hopefully. You know me. All right, on to January. Now, these ones I do have dates for, yay me. The first one I was interested in reading is called Snowbirds, and this is by Krissa Jean Chappell. This one came out on the 18th, so just a, last week, uh, and this is an Amish mystery. Now, I don't hear very many books about the Amish. The Amish to me are very interesting. Um, and so when I heard that there was an Amish mystery, I was all for that. So I'm excited to pick that book up. And then there's Freaks by Amanda Hawking. I have read a lot of Amanda Hawking's earlier works when they were just published on ebooks and they didn't have any physical copies. Um, but this one is a fantasy um, series, I think it's going to be a series, maybe it's just a standalone, um, that came out on the 3rd of January, and this is a traveling sideshow mystery. Um, anything to do with circuses, I'm interested in reading, so I can't wait to pick that up. The third book is Roseblood. I've been talking about this um, Phantom of the Opera retelling by A.G. Howard for like a year now. I'm so super excited to have it. I meant to pre-order it, but I got distracted all month and then I ran out of funds because you guys know that I use allowance to buy books every month. So at this moment in time, I have no allowance because I actually went shopping and bought clothes, which is always a good thing. I needed jeans so bad. Um, yas. So that one came out on the 10th. I will purchase it as soon as possible. I need it in my life. The fourth book is called The Last Harvest, and it's by Kim Legit, Legit, 
I don't know how to say her last name. That one also came out on the 10th of January, and this is the author of Blood and Salt, which is a horror book. I own the ARC, um, and this is going to be another YA horror. The Last Harvest. Just the title alone, I, I'm, I'm interested. I don't even know. I want to read it. Number five, wow, that wasn't even a word. Number five is Caravelle or Caraval, probably saying it somewhat correctly, by Stephanie Garber. This one actually doesn't come out yet until, let me repeat that because that sentence wasn't right. This book doesn't come out until the 31st, so I'm not late on that one. Um, and this is supposed to be like the Night Circus, but a YA version. I absolutely loved the Night Circus. It's about two girls who really, really, really want to go to this Caraval or Caraval. And it happens every year, and their dad has forbidden them to go. And they decide to sneak out and go anyway. But when they do that, one of the sisters gets captured and now she is part of the caraval and the other sister needs to help her escape or like get her out and that's all part of the the mystery and the and the game of caraval or Car I can't even say I keep saying the title differently every single time it's kind of bugging me anywho um interesting Sounds great. Definitely want to read it. And then my very last book that I am interested in reading in the month of January is The Dark Days Pact. Now this is the sequel to The Dark Days Club, which is a Victorian... Oh, it sounded so good. I, I can't even remember what it's about anymore. But it's by Alison Goodman. Uh, it was... The Dark Days Club was one of my most anticipated reads of 2016. So the sequel comes out on the 31st of this month, January 2017. Um, I want to read both of them, so I'm looking forward to that. And those are all of the books that I want to read in January. On to my February anticipated reads, which is the reason why I uh, wanted to make this video. All right, and I have nine books for February. So these actually, most of these are sequels, so it's like the month of sequels for February. So the first one I have here is Denton Little's Still Not Dead by Lance Rubin. So the first book we have Denton Little. Um, everybody knows ahead of time the date that they're going to die. Right when they're born, exactly the date that they're going to die. And Denton Little knows the date, but he doesn't die on that date, and he's trying to figure out why. Anywho, the sequel's coming out on the 7th of February. And since I do own the first one and I was interested in reading it when I purchased it, I am assuming I will be interested in reading the sequel. <laughs> Plus there's a, there, there's a hearse on the first book and um, that right there was a reason to buy the book in general. All right, second book, uh, Heart of the Storm by Michael Buckley, which is Undertow number three, the final book in the Undertow series. This one also comes out on the 7th of February. Now, I own Undertow. I asked for it from the publisher, got about a chapter in, and it just wasn't grabbing my interest, and then I picked up other things and then totally forgot to continue reading it. It's supposed to be set in Coney Island, so the entire like amusement park area has been infiltrated by these sea aliens um, and then they want to go to school and there's a lot of discrimination against the humans and the sea creatures and um, so yeah I it sounded really interesting when I first read the synopsis and then I started reading it and I was like ugh, I, I don't know if I want to read a political book about humans and sea creatures. Uh, but eventually I'd like to pick it up. The third book does come out this year in February. Wow. This is what happens when you don't record for a while. You don't know how. I, I'm failing at this moment in time. Number three is Jonah. And this is the final book in the 
Styclar Saga by Nikki Kelly. And this is a paranormal YA series with vampires and demons. And there's like a hybrid involved. Um, it's Lila, Gabriel, and then Jonah. I own the first two books, so I would like to get Jonah at some point in time. No, I have not read the series yet. Uh, is there anything else new about me? I like to collect books, but I read them very slowly. Um, okay, the next one. Oh, I didn't even say what date it comes out. That one comes out on February 7th. The next book is To Catch a Killer. Now, this is brand new. This is not a sequel. I'm really excited about this one. And this is by Cheryl Scarborough. It comes out on the 7th. Um, this one is a YA thriller. All of these books are YA. I don't know why I said that. It's a thriller, and it's about a toddler whose mother was murdered, and for three days, the toddler just hung out with the mom until the cops realized that there was a murder in this house, and um, the best friend of the mom ended up raising the daughter. And then 14 years later, this girl witnesses another murder, and so it goes on from there. Sounds interesting. I'd like to read it. I do enjoy YA thrillers. So there's that. The next book is called Winter Song. This is interesting because it's got a Goblin King in it. That is what um, made me want to read it. Um, this is by S.J. Jones, and this also comes out on the 7th of February. It says it's a retelling, but it doesn't say a, a retelling of what. Um, like I said, it does have the Goblin King in it, so maybe it's like a retelling of the Labyrinth, but it's slightly different because in Labyrinth, Sarah's brother, Toby, is taken, and in this one, uh, the main character's sister is taken. So there's that. That one comes out on the 7th. Like I said, Goblin King, that gets me excited. Plus, this cover's really pretty. All right, uh, the next one made me giggle. I didn't even realize there was going to be a sequel, and the reason why I purchased the first one was because of the title alone. So the sequel that's coming out is called Revenge of the Evil Librarian, and this is by Michelle Knudsen. Like I said, I own the first one. Who wouldn't want to read a book about an evil librarian? That sounds so funny. And so the sequel, Revenge of the Evil Librarian, is coming out. And that one comes out on Valentine's Day. Uh, can't wait to pick that one up. There's a little picture. Next we have The Last of August by Brittany Cavallero. Um, I just so happen to have the first book. So we have A Study in Charlotte. So the sequel of this book comes out on Valentine's Day as well, February 14th of this year. Okie dokie. The next book is called Beautiful Broken Girls. This is not a sequel. This is a standalone new novel by Kim Savage. Um, and this is coming out on the 21st of February. This is a... I don't know what it is. It's like a thriller contemporary, so it's about two sisters that drown. I don't know if it's they committed suicide together or why they're drowned, but there's a boy, Ben, who was like with one of the sisters. I don't know if they were dating or if they just kind of fooled around once, but the girl leaves him notes um, post-mortem and he has to go, you know, find the clues. There's a lot of books like that where someone leaves someone notes or songs or things that they have to follow to find out why they killed themselves or why they're dead. So I'm interested. And then the very last one on my list is called A Good Idea. Now this is by Christina Moracho. This one comes out on the 28th of February. This one is a mystery thriller. This is about two best friends who, I think they became best friends maybe in ninth grade, but by senior year they decide that they both want to go to college together and they make a plan to do that and then during the summer of their senior year um, one of the girls is murdered and there's a boy that has been um, suspected as the killer but then he gets let go and so the best friend that is still alive 
wants to figure out what happened to her friend, why she got murdered, how this dude um, escaped, you know, punishment. Like, she really believes that he did it, and so she needs to find clues in order to still convict him. Forgive me. Forgive me for this terrible, horrible video. I beg you. All right, that's it. I hope you guys are having a wonderful January, um, and I will talk to you later. <laughs> Bye.